In the African-American culture, we do not leave and pass down wealth to our children's children. We know everything about what's going on with P. Diddy. We know everything that's going on with Beyonce. We, we know everything that's going on with everyone else, but we haven't. We do not pursue wisdom and knowledge for our sake, for our advancement. Now, Gen Z and my generation, we believe that we need about $1.6 million total in assets and savings and investments to live so that way we can have and, and, and enjoy our life. And he said, and he asked me, yo, when is the last time you spent some money? And I couldn't really tell him to the T like, you know, what I spent on last because I was just frivolously spending money. And he said, that is the problem. If you do not start a side business, what you're doing is you're putting your future solely into your employer's hands. Are you feeling bogged down by debt, be it credit cards, educational loans, or other financial burdens? There's great news for you. It's time to part ways with your debt. Fortress is on your side. I want you to meet my new friends at Fortress Debt, which is a cutting edge AI service crafted to lead you out of debt quickly and effectively. I want you to picture a future where you're in charge, not your debt. That's what Fortress offers. So what's the key ingredient here? You see, this AI tool from Fortress Debt tailors debt relief strategies specifically for you. Drawing from your personal financial landscape, this AI tool doesn't just outline potential paths forward using a debt snowball, it also accompanies you at every juncture, ensuring you always know your next move. With Fortress staying focused and marching towards debt-free existence, it actually becomes a reality. So. I'm introducing you to my new friends, your ally towards achieving financial independence. I want you to visit anthonyoneal.com forward slash fortress debt. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash fortress debt to start your journey with AI right now. What's going on, family? Welcome back to the table. Today, we are going to break down the essential steps to creating lasting financial prosperity for you and your family. You see, in today's episode, we'll explore actionable, watch this, actionable strategies that can set you on a path to financial freedom and ensure a legacy of wealth for future generations. So not just, we're not going to talk about just wealth for yourself today. Watch this. We're not even going to just talk about wealth for your kids. We're talking about wealth for your kids, kids, kids. And this is an important conversation uh, because in the African-American culture, we do not leave and pass down wealth to our children's children. And the word that I read, the Bible that I read says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, children. This is from Smart Investing to Strategic Debt Management. We're here and we're going to provide you with the knowledge and tools you need to build a robust financial foundation that your kids, that your loved ones can stand on. Whether you're just starting out or looking to optimize your current financial plan, these five key steps. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, bad grammar there. <laughs> These five key steps will help you achieve your wealth building goals. So we're gonna be diving in today to start paving, to help you start the journey of paving your way to a brighter financial future. I wanna thank one of our special partners and partners. And I mean this, we've partnered together. We've came together to where my team and their team are coming together to help you even live this out. I'm gonna give you a lot of information today, but you still need a written plan. You still need a navigation system for your finances. And one of the partners of today's show is Domain Money. You can go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash get your plan today because one of the key ingredients to really building wealth for generations to come is you have to write the vision and make it plain. A vision that's in your head is simply just a dream, but once it comes from your head, from your mouth, into your hands, onto paper that you can see, now it comes into a plan. But you can't stop there, you gotta turn the plan into actionable steps and actually do it. And that's where my friends at Domain Money comes in, to where we've come together, to where my team and their team, we're going to give you 
we're going to give you, watch this one more time, we're going to give you the plan specifically for you. Not an overall general plan. We're going to get on the phone with you. We're going to have a conversation with you and your wife. We're going to have a conversation with you and your husband. We're going to have a conversation with just you if you're a singles person. And we're going to ask you specific questions of what you need and how you need it so that way we can give you the plan. So listen, go to anthonyoneal.com forward slash get my plan today. And I promise you, you are going to build generational wealth for not just yourself, for not just your kids, but for your kids, kids, kids. Can I be honest with you? Before we get into the very first step of how to build generational wealth, and I want to be honest and vulnerable with you. And, 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 and I want to start off by saying this. I love my parents. I love everything that my parents have done. I am the man today because of who they are. But my parents are not leaving me and my siblings with wealth. We got an insurance policy. But they didn't build something. They, they, they don't have millions of dollars that they're passing down to us when God calls them home. And the reason why is because when they were in their their their, their teens, when they were in their young 20s, no one taught them what to be doing with their money. And I think we get it confused when it comes to wealth. Like, like here's my philosophy. I'm working hard, so yes, I can enjoy it and my family can enjoy it today. But even at this age of my life, uh, at 40 years old, I'm thinking about what happens when I'm gone? I've seen so many people die and, 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 and they didn't have an estate plan. They, they didn't have anything to pass down and families are arguing over assets and families are now struggling because their main income earner passed away. <laughs> And I think one of the most selfish things we can do is not come up with a strategy to build wealth that our bloodline after us can have. A lot of you all watching me today have kids, but what's the strategy that you're building so that your blood, <laughs> so that your seed can succeed after you leave? I don't even have a seed. But I have nephews, I have niece, I have brothers, I have sisters, I have loved ones who I want to see well when I pass. So this show is not just about helping you build wealth for you. This show is about how do we build wealth that we can enjoy today but our great, great grandchildren who will probably never get the opportunity to meet, they will still know our names because we thought about them when we were 20, 30, 40 years old. And here's the very first step. It has nothing to do with the practical money side, but it has everything to do with money. And that is to seek wisdom and knowledge. We jump on YouTube and, and, and entertainment and drama and, and, and other people's issues are just all out there. We know everything about what's going on with P. Diddy. We know everything that's going on with Beyonce. We, we know everything that's going on with everyone else, but we haven't. We do not pursue wisdom and knowledge for our sake, for our advancement, as much as we seek knowledge and wisdom from other people's issues. Man, I hate the things that's going on with Diddy. I hate what Cassie has gone through in the past. I'm praying that Cassie will get, you know, uh, um, um, uh, I'm gonna say Cassie. I'm praying that Diddy gets what he deserves. Whatever that is, I'm not saying anything else. I'm just saying, I'm praying that whatever he deserves, he gets just that but I'm not spending time throughout my day. I am not consuming the majority of my time knowing everything about Diddy, and I do not know the things. I'm not going after the things that's producing me more knowledge that would, that would then produce me more income so I can generate more wealth for my children's children, children. 
And so if we're going to build generational wealth, we have to build more knowledge and seek more wisdom from others who've done what we've done so that we, we can pass down knowledge and wisdom. And how do we do that? It's simple. You got to educate yourself with books. You got to get into courses. You got to get into seminars and you have to start watching videos that feed your brain, that feed your soul, that feeds your life, not just entertain your flesh. And you've got to find mentors who will guide you along the journey that you are going on. When is the last time you've taken an investment course? When is the last time you've taken a course on how to eliminate your debt? When is the last time you've taken a real estate investing course or home ownership investment course if you're not a homeowner? When is the last time you've, you've done some research on how to start a business or how to turn your hobby into a business that's producing wealth? When is the last time you've gotten wisdom and knowledge from mentors who can guide you along your journey? When it comes to wealth, we have to stay up to date with the financial news and what's happening. When you first wake up in the morning, are you jumping on Instagram? Are you jumping on TikTok to see who's going viral, to see what news is all over the shade room and a spiritual word? Or are you turning over, maybe getting into your word or maybe meet, reading something positive or opening up the news and growing and feeding your brain? One of the things that I've shifted over the last couple of years of my life as I'm, as, as I'm uh, getting older is that before I go to bed, I read something spiritual or educational for my head. When I wake up, I read something spiritual and educational for my head. I'm not saying I don't look at the spiritual word, or I don't look at Shade Room, and no, I do. Did I watch the Cat Williams thing with Shannon Sharp? I did for a little bit. Have I read a little bit of information on the whole Diddy situation? Yes, absolutely I did. You know, am I aware of what you all are aware of, what, what the world is talking about? Absolutely. But am I consuming a lot of it? No, I'm not. Because at this season of my life, I'm thinking about how do I advance myself and my family? Where do I go? How do I go there? And so I have Google Alerts that sends me information every single morning about the financial world, about debt, about freedom, about abundance. And so I'm always, always, always growing myself. And as a, speaking as a matter of fact, if you want to grow yourself, I'm actually hosting a webinar here soon. It's a webinar around, around finances and around wealth. And I'm going to drop that information in today's show notes. And I really want you to spend some time to really consider joining us for this webinar because pretty much I'm going to show you how to invest and really pretty much how to become a millionaire off of investing from a basics perspective. And also, I want to give you books. I want to give you five books that I've read that changed my life. Here's the very first book. It's Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Number two book is uh, this book, I mean, was the very first book that I read to start eliminating my debt and start my journey from a biblical perspective around finances. And that's the Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. And actually, Dave just actually did an updated version to this, which is actually pretty dope. Um, I haven't had a chance to read the updated version, but I see he, he's promoting it now. So I would encourage you to get the Total Money Makeover, the updated version. I think it's with 2024 edition or new edition, whatever that is, by Dave Ramsey. Another book that changed my perspective on millionaires is The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas J. Stanley and William D. Dan Dan Danko. Uh, then number four is Our Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. Um, and then the last book that I would really recommend is when it comes to changing the philosophy on how you think is a very well-known book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. If you've read these books, you guys, 
um, then these are books that you really want to get. But read them again. I read Think and Grow Rich um, every single year. I read The Millionaire Next Door every single year uh, because those are really more so about mindsets of millionaires and how we think. And those books have really changed my life. But one of the things that I've re that read that I read that really educated me was, you know, thinking about money differently. And one of the things that they challenge you in the Thinking Grow Rich is really thinking about your loved ones. And while thinking about your loved ones, you got to have life insurance. I know we 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 sometimes frown upon life insurance and having, you know, a an estate plan because life insurance and estate plan is selfless. Right. It's, it's all about the loved ones that we have, because when we have an estate plan, when we have a life insurance, we don't benefit from that. But yet we got to pay for it. Our family benefits from it. But again, this is about generational wealth and we can't build generational wealth. If we don't have a life insurance and policy, our loved ones can't benefit from the wealth that we're building. And we're talking about today if we do not have an estate plan in place. Because if we pass down a life insurance policy, if we pass down money, if we pass down a business and we don't have it on paper inside of a trust, inside of an estate plan, now the state gets to decide who gets what. And that's why I've partnered with my friends at Ethos who have come together with me to offer, you know, up to a $2 million life insurance policy with no blood work, with no doctor visit. And if you get a policy with them of any size. They give you a free estate plan, will, life insurance, a, a, a will, um, power of attorney, estate plan. Uh, I'm talking about trust, you name it. As a matter of fact, real quick, check out this quick commercial. What's going on family? It's your boy, Anthony Neal. And I want to share a secret with you. I want to share something with you that I regret not doing sooner. If you've been thinking about getting life insurance, now is the time to act. Let me tell you about my friends over at Ethos, a life insurance company that's making waves with this affordability and ease of access. You can get coverage for as low as $30 a month. My own rate was just around $60 a month. And I spend more than that on food delivery. <laughs> Let me be honest. I'm going to give you some quick points of why I love them so much. Number one is their rates and affordability. Imagine paying $30 or $68 a month for a peace of mind. That's less than most of your monthly subscriptions. Number two, ease of use. You can get up to $2 million in coverage without any medical exams or blood tests. Just answer a few quick, healthy questions and you're set. The entire process is 100% online and take less than 10 minutes. Number three, speed. You can get a quote in seconds. You can apply in minutes and have same day coverage. I got my coverage through Ethos literally in 10 minutes and got my thing back quick. Trust and reliability is the last thing I love about them. Ethos has an A plus rating with the BBB and stellar trust pilot reviews. Every day, around 2000 families are approved for life insurance through Ethos. Listen, I don't want you to wait. Life insurance rates can increase by eight to 10% each year you delay. I purchased my policy a few years ago and if I had waited until now, my price would be significantly higher. Lock in your rate right now and secure your family's future. I want you to visit anthonyoneal.com forward slash ethos to get your free life insurance quote. Apply and get coverage in under 10 minutes. Don't procrastinate. Take control of your future today. Go check my friends out at ethos because I promise you right now, you will thank yourself. You're not going to thank me. You will thank yourself later because you did something that is for your family and loved ones. That's gonna help them with generational wealth. All right, let's get to number two. Number two is you gotta set your wealth number. You gotta set your wealth number. I want you to decide your monthly retirement income goal. Yes, I want you to think about how much money do you want to live off of when you retire, when you get to the age or whenever you wanna retire. And retirement simply means you no longer have to work. You may still work, but you don't have to work anymore. I was doing some research and the average American says they need about $1.5 million, right? $1.5 million when they retire so they can live the kind of life that they want. This would get them another 30, 30 years. Now, Gen Z and my generation, we believe that we need about $1.6 million 
total in assets and savings and investments to live so that way we can have and, and enjoy our life. So when it comes to setting your number, I want you, number one, I would need you to assess your annual spending. How much are you spending every single year to live? If it's an Anthony, I'm spending on average $100,000. Okay, cool, great. You know, you now have 100000 Now, there's some math out there from, I forgot the guy who made it up, but it's like, okay, cool. If you're doing 100000 times that by the 4% rule, and then I will tell you how much money you need invested to get to that number. So if you have 100000 you do 100000 times 0 0.04, and then that will come out. Let's do the math here real quick. If we do 100,000, uh, no, I'm not times, 100,000 divided into 0 0.04, that's $2.5 million. You need to have saved and invested so that way you can have $100,000 a year, right? And so whatever that math is, you can use that simple math is by multiply what you spend a year. I keep saying multiply uh, divide what you spend a year by 0 0.04 and you'll get the math of how much you need, which goes back to, okay, now that you know that, now you need to get with my team and domain money to get the plan to get you to that number. Think about the desired retirement lifestyle and healthcare costs that you're going to have around that time. If you plan on retirement at 55, 65, or 75, give yourself freedom to enjoy. Don't be like, oh man, I only need this, I only need that. No, 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 no. Do you wanna travel? Do you wanna to continue to buy Christmas gifts for your, your grandchildren? Do you wanna be able to have a home and a vacation home? Do you wanna be able to purchase a car here and there? Think about that lifestyle that you desire. Do you want a chef that can cook for you every week now, now that you're getting older? Like, what is the lifestyle you desire? The average healthcare cost that some people will need is about $300,000 set aside for their healthcare, that it covers their medical uh, bills, their healthcare insurance, and, you know, their, um, their, their medicine. I really want to spend some time and, and on a later show, I'm going to really do a whole show on how to come up with that number. Like what, what to really think about what that is a month and how dreaming is important and being realistic is important. But that's the very next thing you got to do is come up with what is that number? Here's number th three thing. Once you come up with that number, you got to start paying off your consumer debt right now. I talk about this often and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here because this is very clear. And, and, and if you need to know how to pay off debt, how to do this in, in, in detail, I'm gonna link our free ebook in today's show notes uh, to where I literally show you how to pay off your debt using the debt snowball method, right? Um, verbatim, it is a 100% free book. Uh, but the key thing is you gotta stick to it and you gotta stick to a budget. Got to, you gotta stick to the budget, stick to uh, the debt snowball method and paying off your debt, and you have to stop avoiding new money. Because if we continue to borrow money while we're trying to get out of debt, we are in trouble, you guys. We are in complete trouble if we keep borrowing money while we're paying off debt. And we're borrowing money not borrowing money, and we're not sticking to a budget. One of my videos went viral. Um, I had an opportunity to speak at Higher Dimensions Church, and one of my videos went viral. And inside of the video, I was talking about how one of my billionaire um, 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 associates who just mentors me here and there um, says, man, I know the last time when I spent, you know, I think it was like $3 and some change at 7-Eleven because he got a Gatorade. And he said, and he asked me, yo, when is the last time you spent some money? And I couldn't really tell him to the T like, you know, what I spent on last because I was just frivolously spending money. And he said, that is the problem. He wasn't saying I'm a billionaire because I budget he, because his, his company is a billionaire. His company makes a billion dollars a year. What he was telling me was, how is it that I make almost a hundred times your income? And I can tell you what I budgeted, but you can't tell me 
what you've budgeted. You can't tell me how you, how you're managing your money. And, and it hit me in my gut that, man, if I'm going to continue to build wealth and if I'm going to have generational wealth, I have to be budgeting. I have to be living below my means and I have to avoid borrowing more money. I'm going to have Michelle put that information inside of today's show notes, show notes so that you can get that information on how to start eliminating your debt ASAP. Here's step number four, and we're going to spend a little bit of time here. You have to start investing into your wealth accounts. Some people call these retirement accounts. I call these your wealth accounts. Are you ready to transform your future and step into the tech industry where opportunities are limitless and net worth millionaires are created every single year? It's time to level up your skills and your income with Yellowtail Tech. You see, at Yellowtail Tech, they offer cutting edge courses designed to prepare you for high demand roles like cloud system admins, DevOps engineers, AWS engineer, and so many more. Imagine a career as a system admin or a site reliability engineer where your expertise is not only value, but you guys, it's rewarded. Yellowtail programs are tailored to match your learning curve, ensuring you don't just learn, but you also thrive. With a diverse student body representing over 40 nationalities, they strive for gender balance and to provide scholarships to the underrepresented communities. Because you see, at Yellowtail Tech, they believe in the power of diversity. The tech industry is booming right now, and the time to act is right now. Don't just dream about success and dream about being, being a net worth millionaire. Take the first step towards making it your reality. I want you to visit anthonyoneal.com forward slash yellowtail and sign up for a free consultation today. Your journey to a prosperous future starts right here. Yellowtail Tech is empowering you to soar higher and achieve greatness. Join them and be a part of the tech revolution. Visit anthonyoneal.com forward slash yellowtail. The average company match, let's break down 401k. You got three kinds of 401ks. You have, uh, you have ver the very first thing is going to be your just your regular 401k, um, to where there um, um, is no match. There's no, there's nothing there, right? It's just your regular 401k. The second kind of 401k is going to be a traditional 401k with a match, right? And so this is where the company is matching. Now, the average company match in America is about 4.5%. My company, uh, we do 5% of a match here for our uh, full-time team members. Then the second kind, or the third kind, is a Roth match 401k. So I'm going to say this again. You got the Roth match 401k, the traditional match 401k, and just the regular 401k, which has no match and no Roth. So a Roth is simply this. You paid your, you invested the money after you paid taxes. So a Roth simply means you're growing your money tax-free, right? Completely tax-free. Traditional simply means you paid your, you invested your money before they took out taxes. So when you go to take out your money for that, boom, you're going to pay taxes. But I want to give you an example of what your money can look like after 10 years. So let's say for an example, after 10 years, you have $100,000 in total investment, right? Total investment. Let's say this is $24,000 annual contribu contributions at, at a simple 7% return. In 10 years, that's $528,000 plus dollars. Say one more time. You're investing about $24,000 in annual contributions at a 7% return over 10 years. You have, um, uh, well, well, I'm going to say this again. This is an $100,000 initial investment. So you've been investing. You have $100,000 in your 401k. Let's say you step up and you give 24%, which is about 15%, the average 15%, you know, uh, to the average consumer in America. Your contributions is at 7%. That means you're going to have about $528,000 inside of that account. That's good money. Now, I did 7% 7 per, 7 return, but my math, I am more so in a Dave Ramsey math. 
10%, 12% return over the period of 40 years, 30 to 40 years. But I wanted to be safe, play it safe for the people who are watching me today. Because I'm going where are you getting 10% from? Where are you getting 12% from? I want to play it safe. $528,000 in an investment account is not bad. Now, I want to break down a Roth IRA just a little bit more for you, okay? A Roth IRA is a type of retirement savings account that offers tax advantages, particularly for individuals who expect to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement compared to their working years, right? So if you know, which is the case, uh, today, let's use for an example, uh, who's my youngest team member? My youngest team member is Michelle. Let's say Michelle is today, she's at this number. By the time she gets older and she's in her 50s, of course, her numbers are going to be drastically higher. She's not going to be making what I'm paying her today. She's going to be making way more money. And so the, 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 the thought behind a Roth is you want to get taxed at your lower number, not at your higher number. So remember, when you pull everything out from your traditional, you get taxed at the tax bracket you're in then. Instead, you want to get taxed at a tax bracket you're in now because if you're making $60,000, $70,000 today, but then you're making $300,000 a year when you retire or a million dollars or whatever the number is, you don't want to be taxed at that bracket when you weren't making that when you made that investment. So that's what a Roth IRA is. It's going to give you the tax benefits or the tax break of where you're at today. But I want to break down what are some of the benefits, the clear benefits of a of a Roth IRA. Number one is tax-free income in retirement. It provides tax-free income, which can be advantages, which, which can be an advantage if you expect to be in a higher tax bracket in retirement. And if you're rocking with me, if you're part of this E3 community, you are going to be in a higher tax bracket by then, I promise you. Number two is flexibility. You know, contributions, but not earnings, contributions can be withdrawn at any time without penalty, offering flexibility or financial emergencies. I don't really recommend pulling out money, okay? Um, I want you to let the thing sit there so you can grow real big. Number three, talking about estate planning with ethos, Roth IRAs can be passed on to your loved ones, to heirs, uh, providing them with tax-free income. Now, some of y'all may be saying, Anthony, how do I open up a Roth IRA? You can open up a Roth IRA at most financial institutions, such as banks, brokers, firms, and mutual fund companies. You'll need to provide personal information, including your social security number, and select your investment options. Now, here's another um, thing that a lot of us sleep on. I really want to break this down some as well, because we're talking about investing to a 401k. We're talking about investing to an IRA, but I haven't really broken down the importance of an HSA, all right? An HSA, this is a health savings account, okay? This is something for tax advantages when it comes to your medical savings. An HSA, a health savings account, is a tax advantage savings account designed to help individuals with high deductible health insurance plans, HDHPS. Um, so when you have a high deductible health plan, this saves for and pays for qualified medical expenses. And so for an example, right, um, I just had, um, I'm doing a lot of surgery on my, uh, my mouth, right? I have a, I, I have a, it runs in my family. We just have bad teeth and I've been saving and investing into uh, my HSA accounts for like the last seven years. It was honestly Dave Ramsey who taught me about HSAs because I've always went to the PPO plans, the high, uh, the low deductible plans, but cost me three, $400 a month for the plan. I never used it. And then recently I went to a high deductible plan of health insurance because I'm just saving money set aside, right? And so super excited what I've learned and I wanna share it with you. Here are, the key features and benefits of having a health savings account. Number one, the tax advantages. Contributions, contributions to an HSA are tax deductible, meaning they reduce your tax income. So if you put money into an HSA account, you can write it off on your taxes. Number two, growth. It funds in your HSA grow tax-free. This include interest, dividends, and capital gains. Number three, withdrawals. You can withdraw money from your HSA for qualified medical, dental, eye expenses, 100% tax-free. 
So watch this. If you have eye surgery or if you know if you need to have eye surgery or you have a surgery coming up, y'all take the money, put it inside of your of your um, health savings, your HSA. Right. You get to write that off. Check this out. And you get to get pay for your medical benefits with tax free money. Say one more time. If you know you got a $5,000 expense coming, if you know you got to buy new glasses, if you know you got to go buy medicine, instead of you taking the money from your account, it's a tax move. Let me teach you this. Instead of taking your money from your say, your checking account and you pay for it um, at uh, Walgreens, CVS, the drugstore, you're, you know you're about to go to the hospital to do your yearly checkup, to do your annual checkup, instead of you taking that money out and paying it directly to them, no, take the money out, put it inside of your HSA. Now you get to write that off and then use that money to pay them. You get a actual debit card with a Visa logo on it and you get to use that money tax-free. Now, let's talk about this. What are the contribution limits for this year, 2024? The contribution limits are $4,150 for individuals, for single individuals, and $8,300 for families. Individuals aged 55 and older can make an additional catch-up contribution of $1,000 within a calendar year, right? Now, let's talk about this because you're all like, well, wait a minute, Anthony, what do you mean by high deductible health plans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here are the requirements for this. To contribute to an HSA, you must be enrolled in an HDHP high deductible health plan for 20, uh, and that's what I'm in, for 2024. And a high deductible health plan is defined as a plan with a minimum deductible of $1,600 for individuals and $3,200 for families, with maximum out of pocket expenses of $8,050 for single individuals and $16,100 for families. So this simply means for me, that my my actually deductible out of pocket is six thousand dollars so what this simply means is anything before six thousand dollars i gotta pay for it out of pocket but i'm not tripping because i have that in my emergency saving funds but then my maximum out of pocket is right at eight thousand dollars then that simply means that i can't go out of pocket eight thousand dollars or more and then my health insurance will kick in for those extreme emergencies and i i love it because i'm only paying like maybe eighty dollars a month for my health plan and I have health insurance. And I'm able to put money inside of my health HSA, health savings account. I write that off and I use it to pay for my medical bills. I'm talking about even NyQuil when I'm sick, I pay for it through that and I get to write off the NyQuil because I've already written off the money that's going inside of my HSA account. Now, qualified medical expenses. Funds can be used for a wide range of qualified medical expenses, including doctor visits, prescription medications, dental care, vision care, and even certain over-the-counter medication and supplies. The IRS provides a comprehensive list of qualified medical expenses, and I will have Michelle put that list, that link uh, to that inside of today's show notes. Because even when you go inside like DoorDash, they even have HSA qualified up underneath it, let you know you can use your information there. Not your information, your HSA card to purchase this medical thing over the counter. So when we're building generational wealth, we got to look at all the avenues because inside of an HSA, while you're saving money tax-free, let's say if you don't use that money, you can invest that money and it grows tax-free. Think about this. You don't pay taxes. You get to write it off. You get to use it without paying taxes and it grows tax-free. You guys, that's a triple tax situation. So let's talk about the investment options real quick in the HSAs. You see, many HSA providers offer investment options, allow you to invest in HSA funds and mutual funds, stocks, and or bonds once you reach a certain balance, right? You gotta have a certain balance. And I can't really say what a certain balance is because different providers have different balances, but that's what I really love about it. So here, how do you open up an HSA? 
You got to choose a provider. Many banks, credit unions, insurance companies, and other financial institutions offers HSAs. You have to enroll in the HDHP, a high deductible health plan. And to ensure you have the eligible high deductible health plan, you have to make sure that it is qualified for one, right? And you got to fund the account. You got to contribute up to the annual limit, either through payroll deductions, if offered by your employer or direct contributions. All right. So here's the last thing that we all know, which is number five on really how to build generational wealth. Is you got to start a side business. And this is simple, right? We've done a lot of shows on this already. And the reason why I'm stressing start a side business is because if you do not start a side business, what you're doing is you're putting your future solely into your employer's hands. And the truth of the fact is, and I told this to all of my team members, this is why I get them off every Friday. It's like, yo, I want them to stay around for as long as possible, for as long as God will allow them to stay around. Uh, but I also know that at the end of the day, I'm not going to make them, I'm not going to be able to pay them a million dollars a year because that, that's not feasible for my company. I will be able to pay them, hopefully get all of my team members to making good high six figures. Uh, so that way they're investing properly and they can grow their net worth to a million but if my company has to shut down, I, I don't want their life solely depending upon me. And I don't want your life solely depending upon your nine to five company. So I need you to identify your pa your passions. I need you to go out there and conduct market, market research and come back and create a business plan and start small. So that way you actually, you and your family, you all own something. Because if your job has to let you off, yeah, you're going to be stressed a little bit, but you're not going to be stressed a whole lot because you've already generated maybe an extra grand, two, three grand a month coming in from your small business. Don't put all of your eggs into one basket. What I want you to do is as you're making extra money on the side, I want you to reinvest some of that profits into your business. Y'all, I'll be honest with you and transparent. I don't pay myself a lot of money for my business right now. I really don't because I'm reinvesting the profits back into the business so it can scale well. Now I am using and taking advantage of the write-offs, but profit wise, Anthony O'Neill doesn't make a lot of money because what I don't want to do is be selfish. I, I don't want the neatness network and AO enterprise to be solely benefiting Anthony O'Neill. And we're not able to do certain things. I was going to do a $10,000 pay raise two years ago, but then I was like, nah, man, I, 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 watch this a $10,000 a month pay raise. But then I was like, nah, man, I, I need a building for my team. Having them come in and out of my house every single day. I know my future wife, she ain't going to like that. And and I don't, I don't, I, I want to get more people in, but I don't want to be inviting strangers into my home like that. So I know we need a building one day. So I started saving for a building and we pay, you know, close to ten to $12,000 a month for this building. And if I would have paid myself that, we would not have been able to do that here. So what am I saying is that as you're working these extra jobs, instead of you buying Gucci product, getting hairs, going these big things, yo, write the plan, write the strategy on how you can build a business and reinvest that into your business. Because here's the truth. You can become a millionaire working a nine to five job. You don't have to quit your nine to five job. And this is why I tell people do things that you love. This is where one of the very first things that I ask people when they join our team is like, if you come here, like, do you love doing this? Like, do you love editing? Do you love uh, producing? Do you love graphics? Do you love serving and helping people come free? If you don't love that, I don't want you here because you're only going to be here for six months. We had a team member here who didn't love what he was doing and he's no longer with us because he didn't love that. So I'm very passionate and, and I want to make sure that every team member is doing what they actually enjoy doing. In my yearly reviews, I asked all of my team members, like, yo, is this company helping you with your personal goals? Like, are you practicing what you eventually want to do long term? Like, is this company serving you well? Because here's what I've learned as a business. If I can steward my team well, they'll last longer. And when God moves them on to the next season, God is going to replace them with someone that can pick up where they left the company at. 
and we're not on bad terms. Now, thankfully, we've only had two people leave the company, but man, a lot of my team members have been with me for since I've started. Since I've since I've started. But it's also because I'm telling them, yo, go start your business. Like, go build. I help some of them get clients on their personal business. Because, like, yo, I understand that eventually one day I'm gonna be making a whole lot of money for my company. But as I'm elevated, this is one thing I've taught myself and I promised myself that if I'm going to elevate my income, I got I to gotta also be elevating my team members' income. There's no way in the world I'm making all this money and they're, they're barely making it. We all are like, okay, we, 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 we all deserve some more money. But as I grow, they grow. But as I'm telling them that, I'm like, yo, get your side business. Because if I have to shut down this company, I position myself to where I'll be well. And I don't want to feel like, man, dang, you're not well. And do not put your eggs into their nine to five job only. It's a great company. Rock with them. Take advantage of the, the opportunity and the season that you're in. But make sure you're coming home and you're building something that you necessarily don't have to pass down to your kids. Because I want to end with this. It is not your kid's responsibility to live to live your dream. But it is your responsibility to make sure that your kids reap the rewards of you living yours. I'm gonna say it one more time. It is not your kid's responsibility to continue or live your dream. But it is your responsibility to make sure that your kids are positioned to receive some of the fruit and some of the rewards of you living out your dream. And that's what generational wealth is about, is that we are living these things so that not just ourselves can be free, but our kids can be free and enjoy the fruit of it. Yo, listen, I, I love you all. Man, I'm really trying to get down to 35 minute shows, getting a lot of content, power pad. Hopefully you're loving it. I am super excited about the season that we're in. It's your boy, Anthony O'Neill. I'm gonna see you on the next show. Peace out.